Father, we thank you for who you are, what you have done, been and about to do. In all our life, Father, you have been so great. You have been so mighty and Lord over God of passion. We hear a voice of your children. It's all about who you are, your greatness, your might, and your authority. We ascribe unto you all the adoration, all the magnification. In Jesus' great name, I thank you. Amen. God is good. Unto you. So
here. I'm a child of God. Amen. It is, is it true? What shoes? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he said he has not called us to, to what? He has not called us into the spirit of fear, but the spirit of what? Power. Sound mind. Amen. You know, when someone had an encounter with Saul, he said, it is you all the people of Israel are looking up to. Now, what are you talking about? I'm the weakest vessel. We are the weakest tribe within all the families of what? Israel. Bible let us understand that he, he said, You are see as selected. We take the wicked vessel and use it for good. Amen. So whoever believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you have that quality, that power, that authority to work to his glory. Amen. At this time, we are about to listen to the word of God. I want us to prepare our hearts. I want us to prepare our mind. In such a time as this, we need not to come here and go empty. It cannot be possible. In a time that all that was spoken for the end time is unfolding, we should come and go home with the word that will shape in our, our soul for the kingdom. Amen. We have no, no other person to be the word of God this morning than our senior pastor, Pastor Ohineba Manfu Hamu. Amen.
has to know is that there comes a time in the life of everyone that you may feel empty. You may feel vulnerable, desperate, sometimes lacking in some, something that is very essential in life. We all come to that level or that stage in life. If we even go to all those who are well to do in the world, they started somewhere and somewhere in their lives they were either lacking or they were desperate or they became weak in some area of life. But there's one place that when you come to that situation that you turn to. Today I'm speaking to people who are believers and also it will go for those who do not even believe in the law. The atheists. Last two nights or two, three days ago, one of us here was cracking a joke with me and brought a very beautiful uh, sort of joke, but it was very interesting. So there was a woman that was lacking no food for her in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon, she was nothing like the food at all and she didn't know where it's coming from for that day for her. So she was in her bedroom praying to God that God, I have nothing to eat today. God provide. And as she was praying, a man was passing behind the window of her house and he eavesdropped what the woman was saying, praying to God for food. And the man happened to be an atheist, somebody who does not believe in God at all. And this one was praying to God for provision. And so the man went to his house and brought food, plenty food, and placed at the door of the woman and knocked at the door. And as the woman was about to come, he ran quickly and hid himself somewhere that the woman would not see him, but he would see her. And so when the woman came to the door, saw the food, said, God, thank you. You are a good provider. You are providing meal for me. I will eat. And then the man just came up and said, hey, 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 let's talk to God. Your God is doing but I, God is seeing you because I heard that you were crying for food and I brought you food. So you see, there's no God. There's no God. The wife is an atheist. He didn't believe that God is in the system. Then the woman said, God did it. The woman was saying, no. The woman said, God did it. The man said, no, your God does not exist. Your God didn't do it. I brought it. I brought the food from my own. <laughs> Christos, I brought it. And the woman insisted. God did it. God engineered that you will pass by my window to hear my voice going to him that you wicked enemy will come and pay for what God has already given you. So God used you to come and pay. You the devil will pay for what God should need. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's right. How could you pass there at that given time to hear the story, to come to provide. It is God's making. It is God's doing. But for the unbeliever, it is by their own self exuberance. It is by their own physical strength. It is by their own energy. It is not anything that is coming from anywhere. They believe that they are sufficient in themselves to do it. Hallelujah. Hey. Last week we saw that Peter experienced it bitterly. Peter did it the same way. Peter felt that Jesus is gone out of the scene. Now Jesus is resurrected. He came to feed us. He came to heal us. He came to supply all our needs. Now Jesus is no more. He's gone. So, how do we feed ourselves now? How do we fence our, for ourselves now? 
And so what we shall do is to go back to our original profession, fishing. So I'm not going to any more a, a fisher of man, but I'm going to be a fisher of fish. Hallelujah. Eh? But Jesus appeared in the sea. And let's go also the story. How Jesus asked them, oh, in John 21, 5. Shall we capture it again? John chapter 21, verse 5, or verse 6. Go to verse 6. Hurry up and let's do it quick and go. Thank you. 21, 6. Verse 6. 21 verse 6. Thank you. And he said unto them, Okay, go to 5 before 6. 5. 5. Just unto them, Children, have ye any meat? Have ye any meat? After that, you are going for the sea. Throughout the night, the Bible says they'll toil all over the night to the morning. And they didn't have anything. And when they were about to come to the shore, Jesus was already there. But they couldn't even see that Jesus was there. They couldn't see the man that was there. They saw him as a stranger. But he asked them, Children, have you any meat? Do you get any fish? Other than you have toiled all over the night. And they answered to him, No. You couldn't get anything. Then verses, of course, said now, cast your, your net to the right side of the ship and they did they cast therefore and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes when they obeyed Jesus Christ and they now cast the, you mean this, they, they went they, they, these are seasoned fisher folks they knew the sea they knew where the fish would be they cast, they did everything, they couldn't get anything. But just at the shore there, Jesus said, Now, your right side of your ship, just cast your net. And the Bible says they could not draw. When Jesus came into the sea, the scenario changed. The lack became plentiful. Multitude of fish. And yet, these people have thought all over the night they couldn't get anything. Within a second, a voice just came and instructed. And when they obeyed the voice, immediately the situation changed. If you allow Jesus Christ to come into your scenario, if you allow Jesus Christ to come into your business, if you allow Jesus Christ to come into your marriage, if you allow Jesus Christ to come among your children family, things will change. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, after they have drawn uh, uh, the fish, Jesus did something so interesting. Let us, before I come to that, let us go to John 18. John 18. Read me a verse. I want to establish a case. John 18, verse 17. 17 and 18. Let's see something there. Okay, thank you. Then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, And not thou also one of this man's disciples? And what did Peter say? Said, I am not. No, 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 no. Hey, you young girl, you don't see well. You are young. You don't see well. You are blinded. I'm not. So the first now, 17 to 18. Okay. And the servant of the officers stood there who had made a, what's that word? A fire, a fire of coals. Because I will go now. A fire of coals. For it was cold. And they warmed themselves. And Peter stood there with them. And warned himself too. So Peter was cold, and so he was also around the fire. He was trying to get some heat. Okay, let's move on. Now, down from eight, uh, 18, go to verse 25. Verse 25. 
Verse 25. Thank you. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They therefore, they said unto, I'm sorry, they said therefore unto him, and not thou also one of his disciples, what do you say? He denied it and said, I am not. Second time. Oh Lord Peter. Peter at the fireside. This is the second time one the damsel and two a servant. When you read the fact that the Bible says, the brother of Malchus, the one that Peter chopped the year in the garden, his brother, could see him very, very well, could know him very, very well. That you chopped the year of my, my, my brother. I know you. Yet Peter said, no, 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 no. I am not. He denied Jesus. 26. Verse 26. One of the servants again, of the high priest, being his kinsman, okay, this is the one who's kinsman to the Malchus. The first one was his servant, and this one was a brother, kinsman, a brother of the Malchus, that the one that the year was told. Whose year Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with you? Didn't I see you? Then he said, Peter, no, I'm not. So, times Peter denied Jesus Christ. Right? How many of us have denied Jesus? By our attitude, by our behavior, by our utterances, and by our gaiety. How many of us deny Jesus by our lifestyle? We do not pronounce it by our mouths, but yet our action show denial. We profess to be Christians, and yet our attitude, our lifestyle, come to church. A <laughs> abomination. Wow. And we say we are Christians. We say we love you. We say we shall be with you. When Jesus told Peter earlier on that Peter, before the, 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 the cock will croak, but, but will, will, will even make a sound. You would deny me, Peter. But Peter said, Over my dead body. Me, Peter, over my dead body. Jesus, you don't know me well. Ah, the way I know you, the way I love you, me to deny you. Ah, how about some kind of the Kikina? Jesus, you cry, I mean, there you rise. I have to be a Kikin send me. I know you are loved, but sometimes you say certain things that I don't understand. Me to deny you. Ah, over my dead body. Wow. Here. Before the cock could do anything. Peter had denied his master three times. Now, at the fireplace, let us come to John 21 verse 9. John 21 verse 9. What do we see there? John 21. Thank you. And as soon as they were come to the land, they saw a fire. I said, what the word fire in, 20, so, uh, in 18? I said, what the fire? When they came to land, they saw a fire of coals there. Just as Peter stood by fire of coal to deny Jesus. Jesus to bring Peter back to his original state of life. He had to set him on fire of coal. Sometimes what you do to deny Jesus, Jesus will bring you to the same place and restore you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can deny him, but the way you deny him, the situation, the scenario, the place, whatever thing that you did to deny him, he will bring that same thing back and bring you back to him. Hallelujah. Amen. So at the call or the far cold side, and fish lay there on. And bread, I call you to catch people. You didn't food because of food. You went to the sea, so you can get food. Here is food. Here is fish. Now come and eat. Read me ten, verse ten. Let us move on because of time. Jesus said unto them, Bring off the fish which ye have caught. Uh, 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 and uh, with shame, when Jesus said this, shame covered Peter. And Peter, looking around and here, ran, went to the, the boat and then 
now we start pulling the net. She. Hallelujah. Eh? With the head down. Bring one of the fish. Eleven. Verse 11. Simon Peter went up and drew the net of the, uh, to the land full of great fishes, 153. That one, the, the trade fish in the net, one net. And for all there were so many, yet was not one broken. The net was not broken. So Peter was the one who went for the fish. When Jesus said, go and bring fish so that we could now eat more. Peter ran and brought fish. Hallelujah. Hey. Twelve. We are moving on. Jesus said unto them, come and dine. Come and eat. And none of them, one of the disciples just asked him, who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. In Gwesaka, Jesus was there. The, because of his, the way he moved through, the, when he was alive, the way he was treating them, the way they were feeding them, he did the same thing. He didn't change, change any, any, any pattern. He went the same style. He, he fed them. The way he, you mean, he moved with them, he just did the same thing. And so they would recognize that mm -mm, this one is Jesus himself that is here with us. And they could recognize him, but yet they could not open their mouth and ask him, Lord, are you Jesus? Because they were all ashamed. Sometimes Jesus put us to shame. Hallelujah. I mean, he didn't criticize their secular work that they were going for, but they have given them an assignment. Jesus wants us to prosper in all that we do. And we could see that he blessed them. Even when they have gone to official, they couldn't get it. He has even added, he gave them more. He blessed them to have more. So Jesus wants us to be to gain. He wants us to be rich, to be wealthy, to be prosperous. But his wish for us is to prosper in everything, even as our soul prospers. We want our prosperity, we want our peace, we want our success. But then, here, yeah, he called them, come and eat. And so they came with shame in their head. And after they have eaten, said, now follow me. That's what I love. Follow me. I didn't call you to continue because I knew you were fisher folks. And I called you from the fisher, from the shore. When you were in your net, when you were in your boats, I called you. I have an assignment for you. Each and every one of us has an assignment. It could be in secular world. Do it as unto the Lord. Whatever you are doing, a nurse, a doctor, whatever, do it as unto the Lord in your secular work. That's what you have to know. Whatever you are doing, do it as unto the Lord. Not all of us are called to be pastors. Not all of us are called to be evangelists or prophets. Some are called to hospitality. So many areas that God has chosen us. But whatever you are doing, do it as unto the Lord. But Peter, I call you. Nathaniel, I call you. Philip, I call you for an assignment. And you need to fulfill that assignment. Follow me. Go to verse 15. So when they had died, Jesus said, Simon Peter, oh Lord, now at the fireplace, now they have, have, they have finished eating. So at that same fireplace, where the fire of coal, you deny me at the fire of coal. Now at this fire of coal, Listen to Jesus, verse 15. Simon Peter, do you love me? It's a big question. And this question does not go for Peter today. Peter is not here. You are here. You are here. So this question goes to you. Jesus is asking, now that you are celebrating his best, he is asking you, do you love me? Now go and see many places with decorations. Go to every home. The precious. Your houses are built with a, a nativity and beauty of Christ. The radio, the television, the whole world over, even where they do not believe in Jesus, go and see celebration because somebody is about to be born called Jesus Christ. But today he's asking the world, Do you love me? 
Ask for celebrating me. Do you love me? Peter, do you love me? That's our question. We profess to be Christians. We profess to love Jesus Christ. And yet our lifestyle is how far away from the truth. Praise the Lord. And Jesus with shame said, Lord, I love you. Then said, if you love me, then feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. That's why I call you. You will be a fish of men. So feed my sheep. Simon Peter, son of Jonah, feed my sheep. Go to verse 16. Verse 16. So this is the first time. Second time. He said to him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, love us, me. You love me. And he said to him, Yeah, Lord, you know that I love thee. And he said unto him, Feed my sheep. But other books will say, Tend my sheep. Tend to my sheep. Second time. So, first restoration, first denial, first restoration. Second denial, second restoration. Hello? First denial, first restoration. Second denial, second restoration. Let us go to verse 17. What does it say, verse 17? He said unto him, The third time, Simon Peter, son of Jonah, what was that me? Peter said, and now Peter was so angry in her own spirit, not angry with Jesus, but angry with himself. He now came to Jesus and said, Oh, in fact, I wronged this man. I did one. So he was grief. He was ashamed and grieved at the same time in his own spirit. And said, Lord, I know you know everything. There's nothing under the sun that Jesus you do not know. Before we even open our mouth to say, You know it, you know the end from the beginning. So you know everything. So why are you asking me, Lord? You know that I love you. This time we would we would weep. He is down with tears. Tears running down his face. Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, if that is the case, then feed my sheep. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is calling you today. Not to be a pastor, but whatever you are doing, do it for the benefit of others. Hallelujah. Amen. Do it for what? The benefit of others. You don't do it for your own self. You do it for the benefit of others. Because of time, that will end it here, right now. Coming to a close. Praise the Lord. Read me. Thank Lord Jesus. Proverbs 3, 27. Proverbs 3, 27. Thank you. With hold not good. When God has blessed you, when God has restored you, when God has furnished with all that you need, because you cannot do anything by your own strength, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He is our provider. In fact, David said it and said it so beautifully. We shall see that. But before then, behold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thy hand to do it. When God has blessed you, when God has enlarged you, when God has given you all that you've been looking for, even the atheist Mama Jenny, I just shared your story with me last two days. So beautiful. And that started my sermon. Hallelujah. Hey. That woman, who was, she was lacking. And the atheist provided and said, your God didn't do it. But I did it. I said, no, God did it. God did it. And indeed, God did it. And when God has done it for you, and you have a plenty, never will hold anything good from anybody. This should be a Christian's mark. This is how a Christ-like person should live. This is how God calls out to. When he has blessed, he said, I know Abraham, I will bless him and will be a blessing. Meaning that when I bless him, he will also bless others. 
Oh, Christ, you need a means that will not find some photo. God has not blessed you to put it in your pocket. To be egoistic. Self-centered. Selfish. No. God blesses you so that will not be my Tyson. You will open your mouth. My test is good. I'm not saying that it's not good. I'm, I'm, I'm using because of the inspection to grow. Okay? Hallelujah. Hey. Amen. So when you are blessed, open the door. Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy verse 8. 7. Deuteronomy 8, 7. Thank you. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee unto a good land, a land of brooks of water, a fountain, and depths that spring out of valley and hills. Go to eight. So God is feeding his people, bringing them to a very good place, a place that you can live and live good. A land of wheat, valley, and vines, and fig trees, and pomegranates, a land of oil. Only and only go to nine. A land where wherein thou shalt eat bread without the scarcity or scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, you got minerals, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass, bronze. Good. And all that you are looking for, God will provide. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 18. Jump to 18. Verse 18. Thank you, Lord. Verse 18, please. Thank you. But thou shalt remember when God has given you all this on the land. You will remember Jehovah thy God, for it is He that giveth thee power to make wealth. See, people in the world, they think, this I'm saying that, you see, self sufficiency in working is futile without Christ, without God. People think that they can do it by their own strength, by their own acumen, by their own wisdom their own strength. No! You can't do that. I know people who do not believe in God, they are making wealth at a very high level. You know why? Because they don't care about anything. The way they come by money, they just want money, 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 money. They don't care whether even a man should die, they don't care. Some are so parsimonious. They are so fringy. They are so parsimonious. Frugal. Very wicked. And they just amass wealth. They don't remember their God. But for you believers, I'm speaking to believers. For you believers, it is not so. When God has brought you to that level, remember your God. Because he has given you what? Power to make wealth. That he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto your fathers at its even this day. Just as he commanded Abraham, so he is commanding us today. So after he has blessed you, remember, when somebody is lacking, don't withhold it. Because you cannot see God to bless him, but you see your fellow men to bless them. Hallelujah. Hey. Praise the Lord. So sometimes I like those who are in, in, in affluence. They, they will go and establish some institution and, and, and help the poor. Some, sometimes they, because they do it to evade uh, uh, tax. Are they not being for tax? I don't think they will have done it. But those who do it, God bless them. Hallelujah. Hey. Some go to do it to help others. The vulnerable, the weak, the orphans, the widows in the society, in the community. They go to help them. That is good. But that's what God wants us. He said, if you go to Psalm 58, the verses there said, Is that how I ask you to make fasting? To, to be so wicked? No. You come and then you just suffer yourself in hunger and you say you are fasting i don't like that but my fasting i'm looking for is for you to help the poor hallelujah to help the needy 
So after God has given you the word, it is for you also to turn it to bless others. This is what David said. Coming to a close. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Twenty-nine, verse twelve. First Chronicles twenty-nine, verse twelve. Thank you. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou rulest over all. And in thy hand is power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. So you see, just as we read earlier on in the Deuteronomy, David, he was so rich, was a king, so in affluence, but he saw that it's only God who has made him so. So riches, honor, might, power, greatness, and everything belongs to God. And he gives unto his children. So today, if you are looking for power, if you are looking for wealth, if you are looking for anything, Go to him, cry to him. He will open the door. He will give you the ability, the knowledge, the wisdom, the strength to be able to go around whatever you are looking for. Praise the Lord. And when you got it, please. 13. 13. Now, therefore, our God, we thank thee and we praise thy glorious name. After you have he, after you have been given all that, he recognized that God has made all that. So what you could do, the best you could do for God is what? Thank him. To praise his name. To magnify him. Who are you? That you are giving all the wealth to you and now you think that it's by your own strength. And therefore you slight men. Some people are so proud. So haunty. To a level that they don't even cherish a man. They, they put people down because they are in affluence. It will shock you to know that many rich people, very great rich people, are committing suicide. Hello? True or false? Do you know why? Because there's no God. There's no God. Because if you are God, and if you face any turbulence, if you face any problem, if you face any upheaval, and comes on your way, you will storm it. You know why? Because it is not your strength that will storm. Your God will go ahead. He said, I will go ahead of you. That is your God. That is the believer's God. If we need you know God, and by serving him, the God will always go ahead of you. And so when there's storm, he will be in the boat and rise and say, Peace, yourself. The God will do it. Hallelujah. Hey. Let me end with verse 14. Verse 14, and we are done. But who am I? <laughs> this is so much all my sermon. My, the theme of our, our, our message is that futility of self-sufficiency in work. Futility, futility. It is futile. It is to non-existent. I mean, you have no strength to do anything on your own without God. Listen to David. Who am I? A king. Rich. So worthy. So renowned. Known by the whole world. He now came to God and said, God, even with all these words, who am I? Who are you? To call yourself Bilonia, to call yourself Bilonia, call yourself Tazunia, whatever you are, Hedronia. Who are you? David recognized it and recognized the, the sovereignty of God and accorded all the praise to God. Who am I? And what are your people? That we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort for all things that come of thee and of thine have we given thee. All that we have, we got it from you. You gave it to us and you have brought it back. Hallelujah. Bow down your heads. And let us pray. Let us pray. Pray to God. 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 Pray to
let me know that whatever I have is not for me, it's from you. And that you gave it to me for the benefit of mankind. So help me, Lord. Protect us, lead us, go with us. If we are going through any kind of problem, any kind of danger, any kind of tumor, any kind of hardship today, if we are empty, if we are vulnerable, if we are weak, we pray God's presence right now in you, that you be with you. Whatever you are, under the sound of this message, whatever you are going through, I pray the presence of God to be with you right now, to send you through your prayer signs. God to lift you up. And this specific thing that you have celebrated is that, that He will come and bless you, restore you as you told uh, Peter, and bless you with all riches and bless, even now and forever. In Jesus' name, we are praying. And the church has said, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Necessities, all the requirements needed to build for him, David did that, and uh, he recognized all from um, unto God. 